Malcolm Turnbull became Prime Minister, he declared that science was at the heart of his vision for our future. Mining's not going out of fashion, but the boom days are over. What takes its place? It is the ideas boom. That's the direction in which a successful nation must go. Innovation, imagination, technology, science. Science got the Turnbull fist of passion. A refreshing departure from the Turnbull finger of self-satisfaction. <laughs> the PM says science is our future, and I couldn't be more excited. History has shown that visionary science and inspiring leadership go hand in hand. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. We choose to go to the moon and do the other things. <laughs> JFK was so visionary, going to the moon was just the first thing on his to-do list that day. <laughs> Uh, go to the moon, buy groceries, ride in a convertible, Marilyn. <laughs> and they did it. They actually went to the moon. The moon landing cost $24 billion, the biggest commitment of resources ever made by a country in peacetime. But it's not about the money. It's about the human achievement. What's also not often said about the space exploration, about the Apollo program, is the economic contribution it made. For every $1 spent on Apollo, 14 came back into the US economy. Fuck human achievement, science is making it rain! <laughs> Much more profitable than my invention of hip-hop Snuggies. <laughs> There's Snuggy Smalls, Snug Daddy, and my personal favourite, Snoop Snuggy Snug. <laughs> Hashtag snug life. <laughs> in Australia, we like to think that we punch above our weight when it comes to science, especially thanks to our number one brain factory, the CSIRO. CSIRO scientists have made Australia rich. Their breakthroughs have controlled the rabbit plague, rid us of prickly pear, given us better crops and herds, and taken us to the stars. And installed satellite TV on the three o'clock train to Epping. <laughs> But you can't predict where the next amazing breakthrough is going to come from. CSIRO boss Larry Marshall knows that firsthand. I invented a, um, a laser technology which changed the way eye disease is treated and saved many people's sight. And I did that completely by accident. Um, I didn't know the application when I started. So oftentimes, um, great science, you don't know what to use it for. How was your day at work? Oh, it was so embarrassing. I was, I was trying to fix a paper jam, but accidentally invented a robot that cures sadness. <laughs> but deep funding cuts under both the Abbott and Gillard governments have led to the loss of 1,400 jobs at the CSIRO, and now the organisation is heading in a different direction. Internal leaked emails suggest the CSIRO is shifting its focus from science done in the public good to science that makes money. The, the notion of customer um, is often a new one for many scientists and, and it's an important um, uh, cultural shift um, for CSIRO. It's our responsibility to always understand that we're not doing the research um, out of curiosity. Oh, come on, Larry, don't sell out. I've been a fan since, well, about two minutes ago, but I like your old <laughs> stuff better than your new stuff. CSIRO insists that public good research will continue, but they're proposing to axe hundreds of jobs to create new ones in areas seen as more profitable. But the most profitable areas of science aren't always immediately obvious. Let me just tell you, if in the 1920s people looked at those who were developing quantum mechanics, which seemed kind of esoteric, right, pretty far from everyday life, and say, you know what, that's not going to have any impact, so let's cut that. You know what the impact on that would have been? Quantum mechanics is now responsible for something like 35% of the gross national product in the United States and probably something similar here. A third of the world's largest economy exists thanks to the work of scientists a hundred years ago that had no obvious commercial use at the time. Every electronic device you own comes from it, including the TV you're watching this on and the smartphone you're actually paying attention to instead of watching this. <laughs> it was clear from Treasurer Scott Morrison's budget speech last night that he'd had a sip of the PM's innovation Kool-Aid as well. Harnessing the power of innovation and entrepreneurship to create our own ideas boom lies at the heart of our plan to support jobs and growth in a stronger new economy. Ah, jobs and growth. What an innovative catchphrase. Problem is, the new money the government's committed to the CSIRO is all directed at linking science with business. It won't replace the basic research capacity that's been lost. But who needs money when you've got enthusiasm? One of the big shifts we have to make is a cultural one. Uh, we've, we have to 
think in a much more innovative way. We just need a culture of innovation. That is brilliant. Why didn't anyone think of this 20 years ago? What dumb idea were we focusing on back then? The new push is to develop a culture of innovation. In August, the government will launch its innovation statement. And while it's already warning there's not a lot of money behind this, we're told the statement will set in train policies to establish Australia as the premier site for technological innovation in the region. Governments think innovation is like Beetlejuice. You just say it three times and it appears. <laughs> but in reality, if science is our future, there are two ways to go about it. We can say innovation, which has worked never, or we can help our smartest people to follow their curiosity, which has put a man on the moon, billions of dollars in our pockets, and Snoop's face on a Snuggie. <laughs> Who knows where it could take us tomorrow? A man in his robot can but dream.